I think uh, when you look at some games, uh, the turnovers, uh, getting key stops in key situations. I thought we did a great job defensively, especially on the first half at Colorado. Uh, we just couldn't capitalize offensively and make plays. Uh, you hold somebody two for 20 on their floor. I mean, you think, you look at the scoreboard, you have 15 points, uh, and it didn't happen. They, they got their heads up and it became a ball game. Um, and I just think with confidence, being consistent, uh, being sound on both ends of the floor, executing what we're trying to do on both ends of the floor, and it eventually adds up because uh, uh, you get yourself, if you're down, you get back in the game, and you got to get a key stop, uh, get a key basket, those, those sorts of things that it happens. I just think it's the growth of constantly going through it because the, the frustrating thing for me is, uh, of course, you want to win every game, but when you see how hard they practice, how hard they compete in practice, and the things they do in practice, it's only in the game when you, when you hit those tough patches. You, you can't get a timeout for five minutes and talk about it. You know, get a water break and shoot some free throws. Okay, let's regroup. I mean, it's a live situation, and you have to learn to go through it and uh, learn from it. If you were doing this all the time, it'd be one thing, but there's such a dramatic dichotomy between home and the road. I mean, other than the fact that you don't have your crowd behind you, what's the difference? I just think it's mental. I just think mentally going through a mental toughness across the board, not just one or two guys or three or four guys. It's just mental toughness uh, and just being – we always talk about just being sound. When you have to get stops, continue the scout report from start to finish, complete the box out, uh, execute the play offensively, follow through on your shot, crash the glass if you're supposed to, just consistently to the game is over. And I think you, you do those things, you have a chance to be successful. But, it, but at home there's a comfort level. It doesn't guarantee you a win. But it's just a level of comfort uh, when you hit a tough patch uh, because it's almost it's your home. You know, but we have to have the mentality to play the same way all the time. We try to coach that, but I just think it's a matter of going through it. What have you guys, uh, how much have you grown since the last Stanford game and uh, maybe the learning curve? Uh... Well, again, some of the same things, just the consistency because you, when you practice, especially when you practice at home, there's a level of confidence, how hard you play. And again, the guys, to their credit, they play extremely hard. They work hard in practice. They do the things we need to do in games, I mean, in practice. But now the carryover has to be better on the road, but you have to be, has to be consistent at home. Uh, but just from the last time we played Stanford, Stanford played well. They played aggressive, but, but they also took the game as a rival game in their mind. We're trying to win the game. We're trying to protect our home court. We represent Stanford, and that's how they played, and they won the ball game. First night, Jalen was playing guard assists for high since then he's had more turnovers than assists while playing at the point. Is that something that concerns you and, and is that something that maybe Well I, I don't know if he's I don't know if it's a, a concern a concern turn the ball is always a concern turns it over but but again he's not a point guard he just played that position for us to give us an advantage but I, I don't I don't consider him to be in a point guard. Um, but oh, you always want to take care of the basketball, whether he's a power forward or the center. Take care of the basketball, be under control, execute what we're trying to do. Because even in handling the ball, he understands what we're trying to do offensively. So you still have to take care of the ball, whatever position he's playing. But any time you can turn the ball over, it's always a concern to me. Yeah, teams adjusted to Sam and not letting him get the kind of penetration. It seems like they can let him. They want to have him take the shot and not get in the key and dish the ball. Are you seeing a difference in how they defend him? I just think it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a scout report now, okay, because the, the, the original piece of game plan, a game film, it was, it was 15 minutes worth. And in some case, you watch, watch it, you know, Tyrone Wallace is on the floor. So both of those guys facilitating running offense, so it's very effective. But now you've got 30 plus minutes, he's the guy. So now you approach it differently. I mean, just like when you see some games, I, I mean, I, again, I'm not an expert on this, when you have quarterbacks and then all of a sudden this guy hadn't played a lot and he plays, and it's like, man, this guy played well. But then the game film is out. Uh, and I think, you know, Sam just being aggressive, being assertive, executing what we're trying to do. My, my biggest concern with Sam is really defending at a high level without fouling more than anything because he can still facilitate the offense. And if he scores five points, 10 points, or 15, as long as he's running the team, then he's effective. What uh, are your impressions of Stanford since you played him before? Are they, and are they improved? Are they oh, yeah, I, I think they have. Uh, and I, I thought. Uh, when they played at Colorado, Colorado shot the ball very well from the three-point line. And then when I think when they played at Stanford, if you look, I mean, excuse me, at Utah, you look at the final score, uh, I don't think that was a true indication of how the game was played. 
I thought they battled in that game with just some, some fouls here. Came up short here. Utah made a run, made a big basket. Then you fouled late in the game. But I thought they played really well at, at Utah. But just came up short. What, are they still kind of a uh, patient? Uh... Yeah, that's what they do. I mean, they execute the offense. They, they do it. one of the better defensive teams, in my opinion, in the league. Uh, they grind you out. They play all. They box out. They battle. Uh, but they execute what they're trying to do offensively. And obviously, Roscoe's that first option, they're trying to get him the ball, whether he's on the perimeter, attacking off the dribble. Uh, Marcus Allen drives the ball to the rim. Humphrey's doing a great job uh, with his stature of just battling around the basket and making plays and facing up bigger guys. So, again, they'll consistently do what they're doing, picking and shooting the ball well. And now, Pickens, uh, one of the broadcasts, the telecast says that he considered Pickens to be the most improved player in the conference this year. Would you, you see him growing? I think it's a good play. Uh, again, I mean, one of the broadcasters said it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think it's a good assessment, but I mean, he's a freshman. I mean, there's, obviously, there's growth when you go from a freshman to a sophomore, but I think a lot of guys have really made jumps. But he's, 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 he's a, I didn't see him in high school, so it's hard for me to gauge the jumps. But, but as a freshman, I thought he was a good player, but I thought it would take time. Yes. What sort of things, what sort of things does he do? He can shoot the ball, and, he, and he's also, he's, he's, he's I would have considered him a catch and shoot basketball player last year as a freshman, but now he's able to get strong enough to tack off the dribble and make plays, come off the ball screen. And when you can shoot the ball like that, you're always a threat because people really have to identify you. Bigs have to close out heavy when you can shoot the ball from the three point line. Do you feel like that sometimes your team maybe plays better once they get behind? Because I noticed in the Colorado game, for example, you guys were down by a lot. You guys came running back, and Jalen woke up and went from zero points to like, I think, 21 or 22 second half. Is there any sort of thing maybe? Any reason for why they, some guys kind of turn on like that? Or? No, I just think they have the ability to fight. I think that's what they show more than anything. I don't think anybody wants to get down and say, oh, see how this works. I just think they have the ability to fight. And I think when you're on the road, uh, when, when the score is even, you know, up four or five, down four or five, it's the execution, getting the ball to where it needs to go, and understanding if, that, if the ball is in this guy's hands, then let's ride him until the wheels fall off. And just really reading and understanding that part of the game. But we still, I, th I think what, what we have to do a better job on the road is getting the ball inside. And that's not just that Ivan, it can be Jalen Post, and even our bigs, Cam and King. But get the ball inside because you have to relieve that defense when you get that ball inside. It can't be everything on the perimeter. And then all of a sudden, late in the game, you want to go inside to a big guy. It's just a hard thing to do, but we have to consistently go inside, outside. How have the two freshmen done in your mind from the beginning of practices till now or even from the start of the Oh, United good job. A good job. I mean, you're talking about guys that are playing, you know, 30 minutes uh, minus, you know, foul situations, and they continue to grow in every game. They continue to get better, and I think you can see that growth, especially in Jalen, from where he's starting up to where he is now. Um, and, and now when he turns the ball over him, early he was turning the ball over just turnovers. Now when he turns the ball, there's some action behind the turnovers. So now you sitting there and say, okay, that that one didn't cost us. Uh, and earlier there were cases where he turned the ball over two points the other way. Uh, and those are breakdown turnovers. Now he's turned over as a charge here, a charge there, but it's aggressive, his action behind it. And you see what he's trying to do. Yes. Is there, is there pressure on you guys to, at this point, to almost win all your home games because of the difficulty you've had? Well, I would, I mean, I, I think you got to win your home games anyway. I, I don't know if that's necessarily when you say pressure, we must win this home game. But I, I think you have to win your home games because that's what you should do. Uh, and, I, and I think and I'd be very surprised if we don't win a road game because, I, again, I haven't went into any road game since, man, I don't think we can win this game. It's just a matter of doing what we do. So that part I'm not as concerned about. It's just a matter of getting it done and consistently doing the things that we do from start to finish of games. But I, th I just think with home games, that's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Do you think it's possible that, you know, you know at slash when you guys get that first road win that that will – Change things in your mindset. You guys might start maybe win a couple, and it's okay. We can do this, and that be sort of breakthrough for you guys. Maybe just get that first road win. Oh, I, I like to think so, because again, it's it's not a case. I've been in situations where you go on the road, just like let let's compete tonight. Let's let's play hard. Let's let's, let's do some things that, to improve upon. But but not in this case. We we have the person that will win on the road. It's all. I think it's more mental than the physical part, and we have to complete the message from a mental standpoint to get it done. Changing that mentality because you said earlier this team has slide in it. We've seen yeah. them come oh, yeah. back. How do you tell them? All right, take that, take that little spurt where you were down by 15. Now all of a sudden you're down by two, and don't get down by 15. Well, the thing we talk about is each guy's, each man has to do his part, and whatever your role is, you have to do your job. 
and that is very important. And it's taking together. And at first, it starts with you, you can't be on the road and you got 15, 16 turnovers. That, that, that has to be cut down right there. And then it's just a lot of little bitty things that take place within a game. Um, a key turnover here, a turnover all of a sudden. The turn, and the, the biggest thing we talk about with the turnovers, it's one thing there's a dead ball turnover. The ball goes out of bounds, we reset our defense. But you can't have turnovers where the ball is going another way and they're scoring two and three points. Uh, we don't want those, and it just changes the game, especially when you're on the road. But the biggest thing we talk about is every man do your job to the best of your ability. It's, it's hard to help the next guy until you completely are able to help yourself and hold your own weight, and that's the biggest key. How, how have you kept um, from being a distraction, the one and done fear for the two freshmen? And are, are there thoughts that they could stick around uh, since you've been with them for quite a while? Well, really, I, I mean, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think it's a distraction for our team and our players. I don't think they get caught up in that. And I never really hear guys talking about those sorts of things. But and even for you, if you're talking about Ivan and Jalen, they don't talk about it. So um, it's just something we don't consume ourselves with. Because I, like I said at the beginning of the season, for those guys, that part will take care of itself when it presents itself. And, and that will just be a, a in or out, yes or no. I mean, it's that simple. I don't think that's that complicated because they, they'll gather the information and do what's best for them in making a decision. But, but other than that, right now, I don't know how that helps in any way, shape, or form on this day. Uh, so, no, we don't spend a lot of time with it. Jalen's a young kid. Well, all his parents PhD. He's a very, very unite kid. When he has turnover problems like he has, and you have the, the disparity between home and road, how, does, how do you see him go about intellectually and mentally kind of trying to fix what, what he's done wrong and trying to think his way? We watch film. I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily thinking outside because it's just basketball when you step on the floor. Um, I mean, you can analyze eight different ways the bottom line is taking care of that ball. Um, and I think that's the biggest key. But he watches film. He studies. He sees it. And again, he's a lot better than what it was. But it just ta it's, it's simply taking care of the ball. Um, every possession down. Now, again, you're not sitting there consuming yourself like you're a robot. Just, okay, don't turn it over. Don't. You have to play basketball. And he'll have turnovers because he makes plays. He's a guy that makes plays. That'll happen. But where your turnovers can happen with guys that aren't playmakers. And that's the biggest key. Playmakers have turnovers because that's what they do. And defenses gear up to try to stop those guys. So I, so I expect that. But it's just how you turn the ball over is the biggest key. But, but, it, but again, he watches film. He studies. And he understands. And he sees it. But he still has to be a basketball player when he steps on the floor. So probably have time for one or two more questions. It seems like Cam is playing a little better. Yes. Certainly rebounding. Ball yes. Is there a change coming at that spot in terms of these starts? Or? I don't think so, but again, it could, it could change tomorrow. But as of right now, I don't think so because I think I think Cam's comfortable with what he's doing. Uh, and King, I I I th really well defensive. And again, I, I think Cam can score more. And I think we have to do a, a good job of really trying to get him the ball. He has to do his part of really posting as well as the other two big guys being assertive in the post, whether you're deep post, but you have that position to make plays. But, but rebounding the ball, I'm very proud with seven rebounds again. I think he eventually he can get it to 10 because uh, he's done a great job with his conditioning. Uh, he continues to improve his hands. Uh, I, I've, I've ha I'm happy with the way Cam is really rebounding. Yes, positioning and just getting in people's ways. Yeah. Whatever. Well, you know, he, I thought he did his best job until the last maybe two and a half minutes of the Colorado game. And again, I guess I guess only so much I can say. Yeah, but only so much I can say. But one of those, watching on film, I guess you got to keep moving. But I, I thought he did his best job for, for the minutes he played and down the stretch again. Uh, but just we just work on keeping your hands high as you can keep them and go from there. You know, we spend a lot of time on it in practice, and I think even for Kingsley, I mean, it's like he's going, to, he's on a streak of getting three fouls in the first half, uh, and just, just being disciplined. And, and those, in most cases, are legitimate calls. And I don't know about the first one at Colorado, the, the offensive foul, but he has to do a better job uh, of stop fouling. I think that's the biggest key. And I, and I think that's the other thing on the road: we're fouling too much. We're giving up too many points at the free throw line. Let me go last question here. Is there a lot more talk this week? Uh, Oh yeah, I mean, plus you know Stanford beat it, so they they feel they understand it, uh, and, and I think that's good. But it's, but but again, I, I'll go back to the fact that the one thing I give guys their energy is normally at a high level in practice, and they do a good job really competing. It's just a matter, of, you know, when you talk about road games, they're carrying it from start to finish on the road. But yes, I mean they understand who we're playing against, and they know what it means.